this thing is running so bad. This thing is definitely misfiring. Flashing check engine light, catalyst damaging misfire. Not good. Last time I drove the Lightning to legit street quarters, I noticed it was running a little rough, so I shut it down and just left it at the shop. Uh, it's been there for about a week. So I'm just driving around the block and uh, yeah, it's definitely misfiring. So we absolutely have to fix this because we need this truck to tow the Trans Am first to CarMax for an appraisal because I'm just curious what they would give me for a car that, I mean, basically has frame damage. I mean, the whole floor and everything is rotted out. Um, and then we are gonna be giving this Trans Am away to a high school student in need who also owns an LT1 Firebird with a blown engine. So this Trans Am is going to get properly recycled. The circle of high performance life will be complete, but it all starts with me diagnosing and fixing my SVT Ford Lightning. So let's get back to the shop. Oh, this thing's flashing at me, I feel so bad. Um, and let's fix this guy up. All right, let's see what this code is. Diagnosis, control unit, PCM. All right, I'm gonna say cylinder six misfire. Place your guess down below. Which cylinder is it? Winner gets bragging rights in the comments. Cylinder three, cylinder three. And we have an overboost condition. Uh, I haven't gotten into boost in a long time, but then again, I've never scanned this thing or cleared its codes. Um, and it does have a larger crank pulley. So I'm curious how much boost this thing does make. But if you guys have followed along in the Lightning series, you know that this car actually has bad head gaskets. I'll leave the link down below. It's too much to explain right now, but we can still tow a car with bad head gaskets, believe it or not. But anyway, uh, cylinder three misfire right here. Uh, let's just go ahead and start taking a look at ignition. All right, so cylinder number three is that one right there. So passenger side, we have one, two, three. And you guys warned me when I first bought this truck that the Excel coils were no good and they always go bad. And I just noticed this because I haven't touched the ignition system on this car, um, but they're not all Excel. So you can see one yellow Excel there. These back ones are black. I think they're just factory Ford or some kind of aftermarket coils. Um, and check this out. This is the number five coil on the driver's side and it's not even bolted in properly. It's totally loose. I would have imagined this was causing the misfire, uh, but apparently not. I guess this is okay. We're gonna fix it anyway, but hopefully we just have to tighten that bolt and it's not stripped. Crossing my fingers here. Got one of the PCV hoses out of the way. This should be pretty easy. So each coil just has one bolt. And let's see if we can get it out of the way of this fuel rail. Yep. Okay. It looks fine, it's not cracked or anything. And I don't see anything inside of here though. That's not good. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. This guy is just kind of dangling in there. So this is what actually makes contact with the plug. And yeah, I don't know. That might have just broken off, I'm not really sure. All right, so I'll pull this rubber boot off. And you can see there's no spring. The spring used to slide over this little metal spade in here, and that's how it makes contact with the plug. This simply could have just come loose when I pulled it off, or had it come loose earlier, that would definitely cause the misfire, but I think, just so we don't mess around here, I'm gonna go ahead and swap this with one of the easier coils to get to. All right, so I'm just taking a look at the spark plug here, and it wasn't making any ticking sounds or anything like that, so I don't believe there's any problem with the spark plug. If you guys aren't familiar, the 99 to 2002, SVT Lightning had an issue because the heads only have four threads for the spark plug, so the plugs would actually pop out. So the Lightning's had the issue and pretty much all the other Triton V8 engines in the pickup trucks and SUVs and stuff like that. Uh, and then in 2003 on the Lightning and probably on the rest of the lineup, they cut eight threads into the head for the spark plug and that pretty much fixed it. Ford had only been making engines for like 100 years at that point and somehow they thought going to four threads for a spark plug on the naturally aspirated version was a good idea. And then those were popping the spark plugs out and sometimes dent in the hood. And so on the boosted application, they stuck with the four threads. It makes absolutely no sense. But when I take these heads off to do the head gaskets, I'm definitely gonna do something about that. Well, on the first coil, we got the spring attached to the coil, but the rubber boot is left inside of the cylinder head. There we go. These are probably just cheap aftermarket coils. I don't see any marking on them at all, but whatever. We'll swap this one out with three and see what happens. Okay, so I've moved cylinder three's Excel coil to cylinder one. And before we started up, I was just checking over all the other coils. 
I found another loose one, which is a pain in the butt with the fuel pressure regulator to get to. Had to use an extension and a swivel socket. But look at how loose this thing is. I mean, it was just about to come out. I'm surprised this wasn't misfiring. Ford guys, let me know, is this what happens when the spark plugs start to get loose? I didn't take one out because I'm afraid to ruin the threads, but they are tight. I checked the two on the other side. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm just gonna go ahead and assume installer error on this one. All right, so we'll go ahead and blow these codes out so we start from scratch. All right, there we go. Let's start it up. So it is possible that that Excel coil was not making contact with the plug and that we might have just fixed it right now. Uh, I don't think so though. Yeah, it's shaking around, still misfiring. When it idles down, you can definitely hear the miss. Yeah, it's still misfiring. Well, luckily for diagnosis purposes, this shouldn't take too long to trip the light. If it moves to cylinder one, we know it's a bad coil. Okay, literally two seconds later, <laughs> the light is on. Let's scan it. I just pulled the lightning back into the shop and oddly enough, it's cylinder number three. I was really hoping we can get away with an ignition coil. Um, but what's weird is the overboost condition is coating up almost immediately. It's just like everything is exactly the same. So that's a little weird to me. We didn't get into any boost at all. All right guys, so I could feel the injector tapping away here. Could be an injector issue, but I gotta take a look at this plug. I did not wanna pull it in case I ruined the threads, but I'm gonna have to try here because I'm dead in the water. It broke loose, kinda nice, I think. This is always scary on these, these Triton engines. You never know if you're gonna destroy the threads and then you're in a whole world of trouble. Huh. Doesn't look too bad. All right, so here's the plug. It's an Auto Light Platinum. And at first glance, I thought the gap was quite large, um, but looking it up, this is supposed to be 50 thousandths. I think this is about that, maybe a little bit more. I wouldn't imagine it's a big enough gap to have an issue with these coil on plug coils, no matter if they're the Excel or factory ones. Um, but it is possible that this plug is fouled out and just not firing. So it's worth three bucks to try a new one. Just like it's worth trying keeps if you're experiencing male pattern baldness like two out of three men do by the age of 35. So keeps is a subscription service that makes treating male pattern baldness easy and affordable by keeping everything online and it's just as easy as a few drops on your head. Now, the earlier you get started with Keeps, the better, and all you have to do is go to keeps.com slash legit or click on my link in the video description box. When you do, you're gonna get 50% off your first order, and after you sign up, you just consult with a real doctor from the comfort of your own home, come up with a game plan, and then Keeps gets shipped discreetly to your house automatically. You have nothing to lose but more hair on your head, and I just wanna say a big thank to Keeps for continuing to support automotive content creators like myself. Now, let's go see if we get lucky with a $3 spark plug. I ran to the store and bought a plug. I'm not replacing all eight because we're gonna have this engine out soon. And uh, this is about 45 thousandths on the new one. And this gapper only goes up to 45 thousandths, but it's got a little play in there. I'm gonna say this is 50 thousandths. Uh, the gap is probably good enough. All right, I've disabled the fuel system. Let's just check compression. And without knowing the spec, I'm gonna go ahead and say we have good compression. Definitely enough compression for that cylinder to fire. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pop in our new spark plug. Just kind of hope for the best here. I can feel the injector ticking. It could still be clogged. There still could be an injector issue, but uh, you know, for three bucks, we gotta try this plug and just see what happens. All right, plug is in. Just gonna give this a little snug. Okay, that's good, that's good. I don't wanna go too crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, these threads, they're scary. They are so scary. You hear of all the horror stories of these plugs just shooting out and stripping the head out. And ain't nobody got time for that. Fire in the hole. Ah, it's got no fuel in the rail. What in the world, I put the relay back in? Or did I? I think I put a put the relay in the wrong spot. <laughs> There's an empty relay spot right next to the fuel pump relay. God, you gotta make me wait, don't you? We have a vacuum leak. That's for sure.
Okay. We have a vacuum leak somewhere. It's gotta be obvious. It sounds like it's coming right from the area I was just messing around in. This thing is fighting me. I don't care as long as the misfire's fixed. Found it. Didn't have this hose on the PCV all the way. All right, there we go. That's smooth, guys. That is very smooth. Remember before, this was shaking around. It just idled down. The tailpipes aren't shaking. I think we might be all right. I gotta say, I, I've never been a Ford guy, but I've always loved the way that these cars and the 03, 04 Cobras sounded when I bought my WS6 in 2003. I was always jealous of, of that, of that noise. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go take it around the block as long as our check engine light doesn't come back on and it doesn't start shaking on me. We're good to go to pick up a trailer, which U-Haul claims they will rent me this time. If you guys were around for the giveaway Lexus reveal video, they would not rent me a trailer. They said this was not a real F-150. It was infuriating. I brought him out, I showed him the truck, and he's like, I've never seen anything like this before. It, it looks totally stock. Anyway, they claim they will rent me the U-Haul, so let's go find out. All right, so I've cleared the codes out again. <laughs> it's a little wet out right now and snowy. I can already tell this thing is fixed. It was already shaking around by now. And we've already driven about a block, no check engine light, before it came on immediately. All right, I can't go too crazy with the lightning. It has blown head gaskets, but they only leak under boost. So as long as I just drive the truck normally, it's fine. It doesn't blow any smoke. It doesn't lose any coolant or anything like that. Um, but that's it. It was a spark plug. Don't count out the easy stuff. Uh, we fixed it for $3. And if you guys saw the reveal video or the second lightning video, you know that the previous owners didn't really maintain this car mechanically all that well. Cosmetically, it's really nice, but uh, yeah, I guess they didn't change out plugs all that often and it fouled out and, and that's what we have. So anyway, when we take the engine out, we'll put all new plugs in it and take care of a bunch of other things at the same time. Um, but for now, we have to go to CarMax with a rotted out, destroyed, practically totaled Firebird, get an estimate. <laughs> and then give it away to a high school kid in need. <laughs> but first, I'm gonna do some donuts. <laughs> All right. <Woo! laughs> well, I just got back from U-Haul and they rented me a trailer, same location, different guy though, and he came out, he was totally into the Lightning. I told him I was towing a 96 TA, he loved that. Also, we checked the lights, everything is good. So that guy was much better than the last guy who literally did not believe that this was a Ford F-150. It literally says F-150 right here, I gave him the VIN. He would not believe me, so he wouldn't rent me this trailer and we had to use a six cylinder Toyota 4Runner instead. He was totally cool with that, but anyway, Anyway, uh, this trailer is a little snowy. I gotta clean that up. I gotta clean up the TA and I have a battery for the TA so we can get it off the trailer and drive it right into the CarMax parking lot like a totally normal car. All right, I've installed a temporary battery, filled up the totally flat tires. All right, let's see if it'll fire up. It's about probably 15, 20 degrees out. Come on. Not good. Ooh, it's catching. Come on, baby. <laughs> yes. It runs. It's got a rough cold start, but no smoke whatsoever. No ticking from the engine. This thing runs pretty darn good, especially for having six or seven year old fuel. If you guys were around for the last video, you know that I was able to drive this thing around. It does have brakes. It drives quite nicely. It shifts perfectly as well. And I drove it by Mel's house, the guy I bought it from in the last video and he wasn't home. I can't get a hold of him. I really wanted to drive it by and have him take a look at the car running and driving, but he's not answering.
Fun fact, I've never loaded a car onto a trailer and I've never trailered a car before in my life. And I've chosen the winter time and a two wheel drive SVT Lightning and a U-Haul trailer to be my first tow rig. So that went really well. Hopefully the rest of this does too. All right, TA is loaded up. We're heading to legit three quarters to pick up Max and take off some plates. And uh, if you guys ever wondered what a squatted SVT Lightning looks like, well, hopefully you've never wondered that because it'd be horrible, but this is it. This is it. It's definitely feeling the weight and we haven't even taken off yet. Luckily, this thing's running like a champ, though. All right, guys, I made it to my shop without a hitch. <laughs> that is so bad, but the Lightning did really well. It's a little squatted. It does feel a little heavy back here, but I kept it at about 55 on the highway, and it's gonna do just fine. So for those of you who haven't seen any of the TA videos, just a quick recap. Although this car looks fine from a distance, it's all but totaled. Every single panel on this car has been hit filled with bondo and is rusting and probably the worst part of the car is the floors they're completely rotted through everything is rusted underneath the steering suspension exhaust it would be way more cost effective just to buy a good solid roller and transplant the drivetrain which works fine and of course this has a bunch of other good parts on it that can be removed so it's a great part out car the bumpers the spoiler the taillights the glass all of that kind of stuff is in good shape but it just wouldn't be worth it to fix this particular car and anymore oh, there we go um, the odometer on this Trans Am has also been rolled back so it says 125,000 miles but on the Carfax it said 180 like seven years ago so there's a good chance this car has like 200,000 miles and if this interior looks a lot cleaner than it did in the last video it's because I have cleaned it this car had some mice living in it and I don't want to bring it to CarMax like that so I've had this car for about three weeks and I have sprayed a bunch of mouse repellent in there I let it sit outside and then I placed a Christmas cookie on that seat over there and it was untouched for over a week. I've looked everywhere. We don't have any mice left at all. And then I disinfected and cleaned the entire interior. So all the seats are pretty much shot. This one too, the dash is cracked as well. Um, but you know, for a part out car, there are plenty of good parts inside of here also. And now it smells really nice. All right, we made it to CarMax and we're just gonna straight up unload the TA right here in the CarMax parking lot. And this is their lineup of auction cars. These don't look too bad, but on the other side are some total beaters. So they've definitely seen way worse than this. And a couple of years ago, I brought my $200 C43 here. They offered me 201 because they recognized who I am. But today we have a secret weapon. We have Max. He's bringing in his 96 TA for an appraisal. So you got to look the part, Max. I mean, you, you kind of look like a TA owner anyway. I mean, I don't know what that means. I don't it's, know what that looks like. It's a little disrespectful. I mean, I'm a, I'm a TA owner. I've been a TA owner my whole life, but you, you know what I mean. All right, Max, stay strong. Don't accept anything less than $5,000. <laughs> Good luck. Now, runs and drives beautifully, people. It's an excellent vehicle. All right, Max is all done. Here he comes with the TA. So I paid $1,500 for this car, I think. I overpaid by quite a bit. Now we're gonna find out how much this CarMax offer is. Place your guesses down below. No cheating. Max, oh boy. I'm gonna say $300. What were you thinking before you, I mean, you're the only one that knows at this point. I was thinking 200 bucks. 200 bucks, I'm gonna say three. 200 bucks. All right, so. What do you think, what do you got? They gave you, or they offered you, a thousand dollars. No, are you serious? A thousand dollars. Really? Yes. Wow. 
All right. I mean, I paid I, I paid fifteen hundred, so I definitely still kind of got ripped off. But that means that Carmax thinks they're going to sell it for at least fifteen hundred dollars at the auction. A thousand dollars for a car that's. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this car is totaled. I mean, I know it looks good from here. Watch the other videos if you want more details on how bad this thing is. But, you know, it does run and drive. Kind of. It does look okay from here. A thousand bucks. A thousand bucks, man. Hey. I'm Warren. Good, yeah, man. How are you? Good. Nice good to, to meet you. Too. Nice to meet you, too. All right, everybody. So this is Eli, and he emailed me before I released any of the LT1 Trans Am videos asking me if I had a lead on an LS engine. He wanted to swap his formula. This thing is awesome. Super rare color. What, what do they call this color? Purple gray metallic. Purple gray metallic hard top 93 LT1 formula. They did not make too many of these. No. And uh, unfortunately, the engine doesn't work anymore, right? No, it not really. So. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I was just driving this one day and um, the temperature creeped up, right? I think it's the red line. Yeah, the red line's at 260 and the temperature creeped right up and then car turned off and I heard a huge backfire out of the exhaust. Ugh. Took it to a shop, got it diagnosed and uh, it was a bad head gasket and blown heads. So, but it's still, it, it, you said, did it shut off on you and it, it locked up at that time? Yeah, it just shut off and then I lost everything and I had to like... And it wouldn't, rest I, yeah. it wouldn't restart it after wouldn't all that? Start. Well, it, okay. it did. It did. Like, we gave it a chance to cool down right. before we okay. it. Right, okay. It probably locked up from the heat, and then it mm -hmm. cooled down and started back up. So this engine is toast, and it sounds like it's toast, right? It is. All right, this is way, way cleaner of yeah. an engine compartment than what I'm giving you. Um, but uh, this thing will still run right now, so we're going to go ahead and start it up. I want to hear how bad this engine really it is. It does not sound good. <laughs> All right, let's do it. This battery's pretty weak, so we connected the jumper. All right, go ahead. Whoa. That's not good. It fires up, yeah, it fires up, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, man. That didn't sound good for the uh, short amount of time it ran, but... No. Uh, I mean, the engine's blown. I want to hear this again. I know you guys want to hear this again. Do it, do it again, Eli. Let's, let, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hang on. Time out, time out. What do we got going on over here? Yeah, I just see that smoke. Yeah, there's a little bit of smoke here. Uh, I saw some smoke over here by the wiring. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's coming. From, I don't know. There might be something shorting out over there. Yeah, we're, we're good. I'm going to trust you the engine here. This engine's bad, that's for sure. All right, so we're just going to call it a day. There was some smoke coming out from here. Um, but yeah, this thing died out while being overheated, unfortunately, and uh, and it's toast. Like this is, this is like the race car version. Hard top, cloth interior, no headliner, no headliner. Wow, yeah, the headliner's it came gone. no headliner when I bought it. <laughs> so you're gonna do this engine swap at your school, right? I am. Okay, and you guys have a uh, shop class here. Yeah, we do. And then uh, there's a lift in there, so and you, I mean up on the lift, and I'll probably. Uh, drop the engine with the suspension i heard you're supposed to take it out like from the bottom but yeah it's it's super easy from the bottom that's how i've done it on my trans am yeah. a bunch of times so this is kind of the, your first time really doing anything like this right yeah it is it is i've only really done like oil changes at my house i did a coolant flush on this a while ago like over summer when i got it i take care of my fam all my family's cars so i do the brakes the rotors spark plugs all of that is this something you want to do like you're a senior now right i am so is this something you want to do then for a living or what do you think yeah it is i i love doing this stuff it makes me happy it's really fun and it's really i, I like to be hands-on and um th this is just it's for me cool so. man that's awesome so what are you going to do next year? Are you going to college or what are you going to do? I am. I'm going to, I actually just, uh, I got accepted to UTI. Nice. I, I went to go. Tech. I was going to go to UTI, but really? some other friends were going to Tech. Very cool, man. That is awesome. So the full story is Eli emailed me way before the LT1 Trans Am videos came out and he just asked me for advice because he'd blown his engine and he wanted to LS swap the car and he had a budget of like $2,000. 
Yeah, as like we talked about, the LS swap yeah. is like way more than two thousand dollars, unfortunately. So he was kind of in a bind, but the school was nice enough to let him use the shop if he could figure something out as far as parts go. So I'd given him a little bit of advice, and then I ran into the whole TA situation, the car wash video, and then I bought the car. And my intention was always to give it to Eli. So I emailed him and you took like a few days to get back yeah, to me. I'm like, I'm like, where is this dude? I'm trying to give him an engine here. Um, so anyway, I'm donating the entire car uh, to Eli. And now this way, once he has the engine out, he can freshen it up, do whatever he's got to do here at the school and they're going to help him. And this really means a lot to me because the way I had learned how to work on cars was by ripping apart the engine in my third generation Firebird when I was in high school. And I had like no idea how to do anything and I blew it up, but I learned a lot. Uh, and exactly. that's exactly what happened. Exactly like, what's happened with me. <laughs> Eli blew up his I engine. Blew engine. <laughs> I'm going to learn like you. Right. So, and then so, another, this is so crazy, but he was telling me that he never wanted a Firebird originally. Oh, you wanted a? A Mustang. A Mustang. That's what I wanted. When I was shopping around for my first car, my Trans Am, I actually went to go see a Fox body Mustang. And when I got there, it was like an hour and a half drive. The guy had sold it. And he's like, but I have this 88 Trans Am GTA. And I fell in love with it. And it was really similar. You exactly, were looking for a Mustang yeah. and, and ran into this. Yeah, funny thing is, you also I also saw in one of your videos, you mentioned you had a 96 Grand Marquis. I had a, it was a 91. 91. I actually had a Crown Vic. No. I had a 03 Crown Vic. It was the police intercept. Nice. So. <laughs> this was meant to be. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm hoping once you guys get the engine out, they're probably going to refresh some stuff. And oh, since yeah. there's a lot of parts on the Trans Am that you can sell, it's a good part out car. Um, you can put all those funds towards doing whatever. Maybe you want to do headers at the same time. I you actually know? might have some. My parents were nice enough to give me some. You got headers this. already? Oh I man, do. he's you're, he's way ahead of the game. So then we're talking. <laughs> you got to get a torque converter. Uh, you maybe put a camshaft. I don't know. I'm, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's all stuff I want to do. We're gonna blow the engine up that I give him. But <laughs> uh, anyway, let's go show Eli his new car. It's worth a thousand bucks, according to CarMax. Can you believe that? <laughs> I can't believe that. I thought they would give you like 500 at most of this thing. I uh, yeah, I thought two, 300. I, I don't know, but that's what they offered me. So you got yourself a thousand dollar car. I paid 1500 bucks, so I got ripped off. <laughs> I really want to take these seats, but I don't know what they're going to go let. They're kind of beat up, but go ahead and start it up. The most important part. It's got a good engine. Let's see. Wow. Sounds good, right? Give it a little love. Is that an exhaust leak? Probably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the exhaust is shot, everything is shot under there, but supposedly the engine was replaced. Um, the guy told me he spent $5,000 putting a new engine in this. I'm not exactly sure how long ago or how many miles, but I'm gonna venture to say the engine's fairly new. I saw Mel, Mel said 5,000 miles on that motor, right? You know, he claims that he blew the engine up and had a brand new $5,000 engine put in. So the body has like 200,000 miles on it and this thing runs beautifully. So I'm going to say that it does have a new engine. This thing has 200,000 miles? On yeah. It? And it's got, a, it's got a good transmission. It's got a lot of good stuff. So you can part this thing out and soup up your car. It's going to be awesome. What's cool is this is the Trans Am. If you wanted to use the steering wheel, there's some upgraded yeah. interior parts if they're not you know, beat up. The door panels alone yeah. on these are worth some money because they, they cracked on the later cars. <laughs> it's totally cleared up. It doesn't misfire yeah, it anymore. Good. All right, so you got the keys. Here is a clean title in hand. Wow. Although I'm gonna say this right now, I don't think it's safe to actually drive this car. So yeah. I highly recommend you park this out, oh, take the engine, good. sell everything, and then have the, the, the unibody, the body of this car crushed. I mean, all the quarters are full of Bondo, rust, everything's yeah. rotted, so it shouldn't really be on the road. But, right. uh, but you know, it's gonna get recycled properly. But anyway, man, here it is. It is all yours, enjoy. And uh, let me know, keep me posted. Guys, I wanted to help him do the engine swap, but they won't allow that in the high school. So I can't, and this is gonna be a learning experience that he's gonna do for months. So, um, but yeah, if, if, if I could go in there and help, I would be there to drop the cradle. <laughs> which you, you gotta drop the cradle, yeah. that's the easiest way to do it. Obviously, if you need any advice, let me know. Thank you. And I, uh, I can't it. wait to see that car back on the road, the formula back on the road. Same here. So we'll meet up uh, with my TA at some one of these days. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, of course. I appreciate it. Anytime, man. It means a lot. Yeah, of course. So that'll do it, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, we were kind of a little all over the place with the Lightning CarMax and Eli now getting this car, <laughs> but uh, I think we've accomplished quite a bit for uh, you know the last two days. But if you enjoyed this video, 
give it a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you're new. Most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video. So Alex, I got you some stuff for your family. This is for you giving me the Trans Am. So I got your wife some flowers. Okay, we got flowers, we got chocolates. What do you got, what is these this? Are, these are for your kids. I know you have kids, you told me about that. And right. Then, you remember, I saw one of your videos and uh, I remember you needed head gaskets for lightning, so <laughs> there you go. Dude, no way, you got me head gaskets yeah. for lightning. You got Felpros too. I know. That's good stuff, dude. I only buy the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have never gotten head gaskets as a gift before. This is amazing. Or flowers, nah, I guess. Have. But thank you, Eli. Seriously, thank You're you. Welcome.